Greetings. So this is Ana do Cailina, Sierra Cucina, and I'm going to give you guys a brief show and tell on the Byzantine placket collar as taken from the Manazan tunic find from Anatolia. So this particular pattern dates from at least the 9th to the 13th century as far as dating goes. And in this particular garment, it is known for having a placket over a keyhole neckline and a stand-up collar. So what I'm going to go ahead and just show off today is, um, are, sorry, a few examples of what I have shown so far, just using this basic method to kind of give you guys an idea of what can be done to sort of spiff up your Byzantine garb and make a more accurate impression. So over here, this is my natural linen. Uh, I call it my midwife tunic, and I'll show you guys in a second. That uh, it's natural linen, and it is basically... Um, the Manazan tunic in its finest. So here you have your stand-up collar, band collar, you have your front placket, and then it has uh, the inside is fully lined, or rather faced, I should say the neckline is faced. And you can see all of my little hand stitches going around here. So, and then open it up. You can see the inside of that placket and how it's just stitched over that side of the keyhole. And then the band collar, which goes around. So I typically hand sew um, these collars because it's just easier and it actually makes it look way more authentic. The Byzantines were super fond of whip stitch. So if, you know, if that's like one of the only tricks you have, by all means, it's super strong and it does the job. So in this case, I made it with just some woven trim that I can just tie here at the collar. The reason why I call this my midwife tunic is because while I took the basic Manazan pattern, I ended up splitting the seams at the arm so I, my arm can come out like this, as seen in a fresco from Cappadocia, which I actually have on my website and I will link there as well. But I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see how it's I kind of just split the whole gore. Now the gore itself runs basically the same length of my garment up, uh, I should say the, uh, the body panel, same length of the body panels up into the arm. And then the arm just kind of tapers out. Now over here, I have, uh, this one is completely machine sewn and it's made out of silk. It's broadcloth. It's for my husband, Geoffrey de Tony, known as Jeff the Moneyer. And I usually do most of his garb completely machine sewn anyway, because well, uh, he's a man and he likes to ruin things and that's just as nice as I'm going to be about it. But in this case, so oh, same idea. Whereas, um, the facing is on the outside, but I just top stitched it. Like again, totally machine done. Let me get over here a little bit. And then you can see the placket here. The placket in this case, rather than having a tie like that one, has a button or a toggle that I can just open up easily. And there it is. Same thing as the other side. So... Again, this is entirely machine sewn. And then I just kind of threw on a uh, a piece of silk right there for the toggle. That's that, that's hand done. That's actually easier if you want to put it in, you know, if you want to sew that <laughs> into your uh, placket. And then here's a better look at those gores. So from the bottom all the way up into basically the armpit closer to the cuff that whole line so you you're probably wondering well okay what are other options we can do well let's go on to what i'm working on today there's harold he's visiting us today hi baby you're in video you my grump muffin isn't that nice okay so this is another version that I made. This is one of my husband's garments as well. This is a regular Manazan style tunic without the band collar because I wanted to actually test it out before uh, losing my mind, basically. So this is absolutely beautiful hand-dyed uh, indigo linen. Same thing as the other one where I just put the button and the loop. So we're going to open it up. There's your faced collar and your placket. Now the facing on this one, because I wanted to make it more invisible from the outside of the garment, is actually done with a hand invisible uh, blind hem stitch. So you can see the little pickups, hopefully, back here. But then when you go up to the front, you don't see them at all. 
so it should be i'm trying to feel for it <laughs> it's you know it's like playing with braille maybe i don't know you can see little like bits but i've been able to machine sew this and i haven't had a single problem Let me and here here it is again you can see where um i zigzagged the raw edges and then you can see the blind hem stitch just tacking it down along the way you can barely even tell on the outside that it has that focus thank you now this is what i'm working on um this is if you saw my um my little how to face a keyhole neckline video that I botched severely the other day, which I still posted because it's kind of funny. But uh, so this is the next step. So as you can see, the keyhole neckline has been completed. I have decided to uh, facing the facing in this case is on the outside and it's entirely hand done with a whip stitch just going around the edges. Not my best work, but it is what it is. The stitching here on the placket's a little bit smaller. I just wanted to make it a little bit more decorative. So uh, in this case, the placket uh, is not shaped as much to the collar. I just kind of wanted a quick, a, a quick square, and I just threw a little trim on it. Now, I don't have my button or my loop here yet, but I threw a little trim on the inside too to kind of help conceal raw edges. And then there it is, and you can see my very bad uh, running stitch going down there. I, uh, this is kind of like my quarantine, my mood is not great project, so I know my hand sewing is not great, but it's keeping me out of trouble, and I think that's really the most important, uh, thing here. So, yeah, so fully faced keyhole collar, throw the placket over the top, and you're done. Uh, now this is going to be more of a traditionally cut style Byzantine, uh, tunica, delmatica, whatever, uh, depending on you know, what terminology you want to use. So since I do a little bit more later Byzantine, this is a commission. Um, so it's, it's going to have straight sleeve, uh, speak straight sleeves. It's going to throw a little trim down here. The sleeves will be long and then it just widens up at the bottom. I'm not putting gores in this one only because I'm going to have trim along the bottom and it's just easier to do that without gores. Not going to lie. Uh, this one, is again a traditional Manazan style tunic. I have blog posts. I'm actually just gonna link you guys to the blog post rather than try to uh, go through this mess. This was just washed. And like I said, I can totally machine wash these with the hand stitching without any problems whatsoever. And uh, but you can see that long, long gore is long all the way down. So um, I hope that helps a little bit seeing these up front again. So, you know, uh, you can go very decorative, like what I'm doing here. You can go over here to the traditional style with the high band collar and, uh, you know, beautiful whip stitching. It's actually, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to wear. It's super protective for your neck if you're going to be working outside. Uh, the split sleeves, of course, as seen in the frescoes from Cappadocia. And then, of course, if you want to machine sew it and be more decorative, you are more than welcome to do that as well. So I hope this was at least a bit more helpful to some folks who are looking for some examples of how this works. I know visuals matter to me. And so when you go to go ahead and use this pattern or try to make something similar, it's a little less intimidating and you'll be willing to give it a shot. Have a great afternoon.